Good morning, friends. We're happy to have you here with us for our cooking class. You know, every day we are in a cooking class, aren't we? We need to be thinking ahead of time. What am I going to give my family today? And as you plan your menu for the day, you think, what ingredients do I have? How am I going to prepare it? Would it taste nice? Would the children like to eat it? And even sometimes I pray and I say, Lord, what am I going to cook? I don't have a clue. And as I pray, then ideas come and help. And then when I see that the children say, mmm, may I have more? Mmm, may I have more? Then I say, thank you, Lord, for helping me. Now, since he's our daily bread, we would start our program asking his presence. Let us bow our heads for a prayer. Our Father in heaven, I want to come before you first of all to thank you for all the things that you've done for us, for all the food that every day we are able to eat, and for all your provision that comes from thine hand. Father, I invite the presence of your Holy Spirit, asking also the forgiveness of our sins. Send us your Holy Spirit that we can have the fruits in our hearts and help us, Lord, to be dying to self every day that we can remember that food is not the most important thing, but you are the number one. And of course, we need to think that food should be nutritious, should be approved by the Lord, that it'll give us the strength that we need to perfection our characters every day into the image of Christ. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning we have Sister Araceli Cartagena with us. And what dish are you going to help us to prepare? Well, we will help you to prepare a recipe of peanut sauce savory. Okay, the ingredients we have here is one cup boiled peanut here. They're already boiled, right? Boiled. Okay. Then one cup water over peanut were boiled here. And the water. Here is the water. Many people tend to throw away the water, you know, after they boil it. But it's good to save it so they can use it for a dressing. Then we have a one teaspoon salt together with a one teaspoon oregano. Here it is. Mm -hmm. And then the seven pieces squeezed calamansi juice here. It's already there. And then we have one cup onions. One here. cup of onions. And seven cloves of garlic. Very good. These all are ingredients for our peanut sauce savory. Savory. And then what do we do with all those ingredients? Okay, what we have to do is to blend until creamy. We have to put in to a blender and then we have to blend it until So if we want it as a thicker bread spread use less water like here. Yeah. It is thick. And if as a sauce for vegetable salad, you may add more water. And here is what we have. Yeah. And that's for all for our uh, peanut sauce savory. And here is the finished uh, product we have. All right. Yeah. That one, as you can see, it's thick. We turn it and, you know, it doesn't fall because it's like a peanut butter. You can make like your own peanut butter and the children really liked it. And you can put it on top of your bread or crackers and it's delicious. And the other one, it's a little bit more liquid, more like a sauce that you can use for your vegetables. Some mothers have said, how do you make your children eat vegetables? Well, first of all, I don't ask them. 
what they receive at the table, they should eat it gratefully, without murmuring, without complaining, because it comes from the Lord. So they have learned that whatever is served, they eat it. And I encourage parents to do that. Don't ask them, do you want it? Do you like it? You don't like it? And you take it away? No, we have to teach them to eat fruits and vegetables. Now, if you already had that custom of asking, pray about it, that the Lord will help you to break that habit. And one way is making a savory dressing. You prepare your salad like carrots and raw chayote and cucumbers. And if you put a dressing like this, you will see that your plate of salad will go very quickly because it's very delicious and you wouldn't have any trouble with your children eating it. Now, we blended it in this, right? I want to um, let you know you don't need a very expensive blender to make your recipe. If you have it, that's a blessing. It can be a smaller one or even in one of the cooking demonstrations that we had, for some reason we couldn't make the blenders work, we ended up using the mortar and the stone. So we took the, the cup of beans and you know we were smashing it, smashing it, and then adding the other ingredients like the calamansi and the water. So according to your budget, you can do it and you can still eat a delicious meal. Thank you very much, sister, for your help, and God bless you. Now we would invite Sister Melody Macalanda together with all the family. And you would get to taste this delicious dressing for your lunch time because if we give you now it'll be eating between meals right so we want to wait until the proper time for eating our meals yes yes probably take the, this is it yeah take Well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Our menu for today uh, this morning is about sweet peanut sauce. And we are Makalanda family, this is Melody and Carmela. And, and you are? Brother June. Makalanda. Brother June. So, very simple our, our menu today for this is uh, three ingredients only. Uh, one cup boiled peanuts yes, and one cup water where peanuts were boiled. And, and then five, five ripe pin bananas. Then how to do this stuff? <laughs> she was the one making it, so she would explain what we did, right? Okay. Uh, we just put all together in a blender and then blend it. And until creamy, that's all. <laughs> very simple and very delicious too. Do you think that it will be an expensive dish to make? No. People can eat bananas and can have bananas in their garden easily. And that's also a very good idea for putting it into a fruit salad. You see the yeah, final this is product the there. Product. If, if you want that it will st sticky, you just uh, you just add a little water or just half a glass of water so that it will creamy. Just like a peanut butter also, but it will be sweet because the bananas would add that special sweetness. The other one was for vegetables and this one will be for fruits. 
If you want it a little bit sweeter, then you can add some more bananas or your favorite kind of bananas like the lacatan or señoritas that are sweeter, then you don't have to use sugar, just everything natural and it will be delicious, right? On your bread or your fruit salad. Thank you very much. You have here also uh, one that is not as thick. So you, I mean, so you can see both a thick one, a thick one and then the one that is more liquid. Thank you so much. They were good help in the kitchen and you will also get a chance to taste it during your lunch time. Thank you so much. Okay, I will ask. I will ask the Bute family to come forward. for the Mexican beans on cabbage wrap. Would you be so kind to bring that train? Good morning, Bute family. Good morning. Can you say your names, please? Kevin, Kayla, Kamiel. Kevin, Kayla, and Kamiel. And my name, you know already. <laughs> Kilman. <laughs> well, we are going to read the recipe. Priest of the home, would you be so kind to read the recipe for sure. Mexican beans on cabbage wrap? Half a kilo of dry beans, one large onion chopped, five garlic cloves, three tablespoons of, no, three teaspoons or tablespoons? Tablespoons. Tablespoons of salt, yes. One teaspoon of sage and one teaspoon of oregano. One teaspoon of rosemary. Water enough for boiling. All right. Um, well, I really like those beans, not only because they're Mexican beans and I'm Mexican, but because they're delicious and they're nutritious for the family. You put all the ingredients together, you put it to boil. One important thing is to soak your beans before, like the night before you plan to cook it, soak it and then you change the water where you, where you soak them and put fresh water to cook it and make sure that you cook it until it's really soft that you take one bean and easily you smash it with your hands so this is how the cooked beans will look and the, the liquid that it stays in there it's really savory really delicious and you can also use it for your dressings the same peanut a uh, savory sauce that we described a while ago, you can make it with any other peanut. It could be, I mean, any other bean. It could be with mung bean, black beans, white beans, cardios, any cardis, pigeon peas, any type of um, peas or lentils or beans, you can use the same recipe. Just change the bean and it will taste very good also for the sauce same thing use it doesn't have to be only black beans or white beans you can use the one that is more affordable or the one that is in season so you have a variety also not only stick for the for one kind like only mung bean for example may i say something sure i failed to show you the ingredients when we were saying and of course the salt is simple you know we definitely use rock salt not iodized salt water not need of 
explanation. Then the onions, and then we have the beans that were already cooked. Now there's one thing that you may not know, and that is thyme. There is a herb called thyme, which is very healing, and is also good for cooking. Yes. Oregano. It's very good for immune system. And you can also use the fresh or oregano. Some people have in their yards the oregano, so you don't really need to buy it dry. You can use the fresh one. The only thing you have to remember is when you use the proportions of the fresh and the, the dry one, it will be five times what you use in the dry when you use the raw green one. one or raw one, new one, because the new one has more water. When you de uh, dehydrate them, they will become smaller. So it's a five-time measure. Yes. Whatever you use for the dry, let's say one teaspoon, it will be five teaspoons for the green one. For the okay? fresh one. Mm -hmm. The next one is sage, which is very good as for anxiety. And children's behavior, yes, I recommend sage. <laughs> it's very good for uh, this, the flavor also. And rosemary is also good. You can get those actually in the... Uh, market, some of them in the supermarket. Go ahead. And another delicious way to prepare it is you have the cup of beans or the amount that you would like and you smashed it. Like if you're making smashed potatoes, you smashed it and then it's going to look like a thick uh, pate. And for encouraging your children to eat uh, the vegetables and fruits, you can prepare it like in the next uh, slide. Cabbage wraps. The cabbage wraps, yes. We will combine those two recipes. Here we have uh, the cabbage only separated from the head and washed. And we prepare a salad with what, Kayla? with tomato and cucumber. And what else did we put there? Onion and garlic. That's right. So this is uh, the salad. The way we would serve it is using the, the cabbage wrap like if it was a dish, uh, a plate. So you take the wrap, you put some of the smashed beans, Right? Then you put the salad, some of the salad, and from one of the dressings, would you be so kind, Daddy, to give me one of the dressings? From one of the dressings, the, the sauce that we have explained, you know, you get a little bit and you top it like that. And it's very, very tasty. Does it look appealing? Yes, and you can make it with a variety of vegetables. Uh, some people eat chayori only cooked, but you can eat it raw. You just peel it, grate it, and it looks like very much like a cucumber, like a pepino. And um, exchange one day one type of vegetables, next day other vegetables, not always the same. And alogbate, you can use uh, alogbate or incorporate greens on your salad. Pechay, um, saluyo, any, any of the greens. It's also a very raw. It's a very good to, way to help your family eat them and enjoy them. As many people think that, oh, well, eating vegetarian food. What, what do you eat? Only lettuce? You know, they think that we only eat lettuce, but what a delicious variety you can have and it's very nutritious also. So be creative and enjoy the meal. For the... N can we go one slide behind? Behind? Yes. Next. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, next backwards. Oh. Mm. 
Yes. When that one uh, says options, when boiled, mixed with cooked rice or any cooked and chopped root crops. When uh, you mix it with gabi, with cassava, um, camote, it gives the roots a very nice flavor. Some people would eat the roots just boiled, like that, like the piece of cassava. But if you cut the cassava in small pieces and then put them to boil together with the beans, or you can cook them separate and when you're going to serve it, just warm them up together and it is very nice and you would increase the amount of your food. It's not going to be only beans. Now, some people are concerned about the beans, Dr. Butte. What can you tell us? Are they really, uh, uh, should people have concern about arthritis with the beans? The main problem here in the Philippines is that people believe that beans will give you arthritis. That's not true. The one to blame is the meat. And then people blame the beans. We have been eating beans all our lives. We don't have any problems. I know people 70, 90 years old, no problem, always eating beans, but vegetarians all their life. Why didn't they have problems? Because there was no meat in the diet. The one to blame is not God who created the serpent. Yeah, you see? That's the same thing we did in the Garden of Eden. We blame God. We have to stop. Now, the beans are sometimes a little bit more expensive and may, might be out of the budget, but you don't have to buy a whole kilo. It could be half kilo, one quart of a kilo, and as you incorporate the, the root, then you still have the good flavor of the bean together with the root and you duplicate your recipe, you duplicate the amount and you don't need so much amount of beans. Kevin, do you like when mommy makes the cabbage wraps? Yes. All right, what about you, Kadmian? Do you like when mommy makes the cabbage wraps? Yes. Yes, and you know, I would really invite parents to work together in the kitchen. I really like to see the Filipino culture where men come to the kitchen and help. I really enjoy that and my husband likes to do that also. And allow your children to come and help you to chop something, to peel the garlics, to wash the dishes, to wash the vegetables. Don't be afraid of them using the knife. Come and guide them, teach them how to be careful especially, of course, if they're young, be patient with them. Later on, they'll become your helpers. That's a lesson that the Lord taught me because in each, at the beginning, I was not so patient. I wanted to do things quickly because the hour of the lunch was coming. But the Lord impressed one day, be careful. They are in training. Be patient. Later on, they will be your helpers. And yes, they are big helpers and mommy is happy when they come and help. They ask, what else can I do? What else can I help you with? So you want that for your family as well. This is Gabi that was boiled with some of the seasonings. In the cup inside, you can see some of the garlic. So I'm going to ask Carmiel, who is a little shorter. Can you show it here to me, please? So they can see it better. Hold it. Don't throw it. Can they see it? And then you can combine it with the bean um, dish that you have made before. One uh, recipe that I would tell you about is uh, with the root crops and the beans you can make a loaf it will look like a loaf of bread uh, but it's not bread don't think that it'll taste like the wheat bread or pan de sal but it will come out in a consistency like this that it's 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 a piece like that like a cake like a, like a bread and it is very simple, also using the roots 
any root, any favorite root, or that it's available, and also the bean. So for that one, Daddy, right there, we have the ingredients. Would you be so kind to read it for us? Yes. Of course, we have the cup of water. That doesn't need presentation. One cup of boiled and smashed beans. Kevin, show the beans. Be careful. Four peanuts. Kayla. Two te teaspoons of salt. One cup of chopped onions. And I guess I have to raise you up, huh? <laughs> yes, that's the onions. Then we have the seven minced garlic cloves and three cups of boiled and smashed root crops of any kind. Can you show the garlic, Kevin? Minced garlic. And then, Kayla, can you show the roots? Okay, this particular one here is Gabi. Okay, so you put all the ingredients together on a mixing bowl. You can use a cup or a glass jar to squeeze them, to mash them. And then when they are showing blended or mixed together, then you can use a steamer. You can use a steamer and on the steamer, you put banana leaves on the bottom, and then you put your mixture there and cover it. You put it in the steamer, and it will become like a cake, a rounded cake. And then you can, after one hour, you can separate it and slice it. And also, you can put it for your cabbage wraps. You, you put that on your cabbage wraps and or you just eat it like that and with uh, any of the recipes that we gave you for uh, savory sauce. This one was actually made with sprout mongos, right? Yes. Um, it is very, very delicious and very simple. You don't need a, uh, an oven. If you have an oven, it can go in the oven. If you don't have an oven, just steam it and it will be very good as well and even if you have an oven made of mud, mud oven, you can do it there. So pray and think, Lord, what can I do in my kitchen today that will be delicious, that will be simple and that my family can enjoy. So is there any question about this recipe? No? Any questions? Yes. One hour. Yes. Puedes traer el 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 que estaba ya cocinando. No, está bien. Thank you very much. You can go now to your seat, and we would ask the next family to come forward. That sister. Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Good morning. Okay, we are Malbar family. 
and it's a great opportunity to be here in front of you to present a very delicious sauce. Pag sinabing sauce, sa pwedeng sausawan o kaya in English, okay? It is a, it is an ideal for uh, a sandwich spread or salad. for salad dressing it can be used. Okay? So, uh, with my family, okay? With me, okay, uh, please introduce yourself. Hi, I am the queen of my king. <laughs> uh, I'm a Maria Fe Canteri, uh, Malbar. I am Jasper. I am Jaylord. I am Jap. I am Jap Jap. The youngest. <laughs> Welcome. Right, so, I cook for the family always, but this time, okay, I don't, I don't know how to prepare this, but I will give the opportunity to my queen to do this. But to tell you. Uh, the ingredients are very simple. It is easily uh, found in, uh, in our backyards or somewhere else. Hindi kagaya ng mga, uh, unlike other uh, recipe, uh, pati mga terminologies hindi natin malaman. Ito lang, very simple. Okay? Seburi, uh, seburi coconut sauce. Okay? Sausawan sa Tagalog. <laughs> okay, ang mga ingredients po or the following ingredients are 1 cup buko or coconut meat Ito po yun Then 1 cup buko juice Yung sabaw ng buko Yan. Then 1 cup onion Here are the onions And, uh, Another thing uh, Seven cloves of garlic. Yeah. yeah. And seven piece, pieces of squeeze calamansi. Yeah, calamansi. Pinigana. Yes. Already squeezed yes. for the presentation. And one teaspoon salt. Ayon. Two ba? Yeah. One is written here. Okay. And one teaspoon oregano or thyme. Which is that? Okay. So how did you make that dressing? Oh, very simple. Okay, you're going to put all the ingredients together in the blender and then you're going to blend it uh, until creamy. Uh, very simple. In just a minute you will uh, you can have now your uh, savory coconut sauce, ideal for sandwich spread or if you wish to use the sauce in the salad dressing, uh, you can add uh, another cup of water but if not for sandwich spread you use only one cup of uh, buko meat uh, buko juice I mean this is now the finished product try it it's very delicious as you can see that one is a thick one because she's Tilting it and it's not yeah. falling. You can use it on crackers, on pan, uh, the sal or bread or on the loaf that we presented before. It's very, very delicious. So I'm glad to hear that the king and the queen enjoy the <laughs> cooking and the prince, the princess will enjoy it too. Huh? <laughs> Princess, <laughs> prince, 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 princesses. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. God bless you and thank you for your help. Thank you for participating. Would you be so kind to bring your ingredients to the bench, please? Thank you and we will ask the next person, that's Sister Reina, to come forward. And actually, Reina sounds like queen in Spanish. Yes, in Spanish, Reina means queen. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everyone. <coughs> what recipe would we have this morning with your family? Okay. We are privileged to um, have the recipe of sweet coconut sauce. 
Okay, but before that, I would like to introduce to you my family first. Um, this is my um, priest yes. of the family. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Jake Bagaforo. And Jake R.J. Bagaforo. <laughs> okay. Welcome and thank you for your help. Um, so what I'm gonna reading? I'm gonna reading the ingredients we have used for um, sweet boko sauce. Sauce. Okay. The ingredients are only very simple. One boko meat and the water, and five ripe bananas. So can you show it? Oh. The boko. The boko meat and the five ripe bananas. And the okay. boko juice. And this one is the boko juice. Now, the procedure is very simple also. Blend, um, just put it together to the blender and blend it until creamy okay so if you want a thicker just um just uh bl or for bread spread use less water and for sauce naman just add uh, more water okay so this is now the finished product of um i think this is sticky yes the sticky one and this is the um more liquid one. Oh, more um liquid one for our um sauce like for fruit salad oh, like for right? okay for fruit salad so that's all very simple thank you some uh children are accustomed to eat a lot of sweets and they're not the ones to blame it is the parents because we are the ones who should be in control of what they eat and if you train them not to be eating too much sugar, then they will enjoy the fruits much more because their palate will not be perverted by the candies that are sold at the store. You know, they go to the store and with one peso or five pesos, they can eat all kinds of sweets that will damage their teeth and cause decay. I've seen sad, sad cases with children only two years old with all their 20 teeth completely rotten with abscesses, gum boils in their mouth. And it is such a pity because once I asked the mother, mother, what are we going to do with your child? I cannot extract the 20 teeth at once from your child even just to have a checkup for the child it took me like 20 minutes to convince him to open his mouth so imagine to extract all the teeth because all of them had abscesses and the answer of the mother was oh no problem those teeth will fall out oh fall out but when that child was only two years old and the first tooth that comes out is between five or six years old and they shed out in a progressive way. We don't switch all our teeth at once. It's a process from five till 12. Until they're 12, that's when they start getting almost all their per permanent teeth, except until the age of 18, they get their third molar or wisdom teeth, some people call it. So imagine uh, if we have, as parents don't look after what our children are buying, are eating, we're not controlling the sugar intake, then we are to blame when at night they're all crying because they have a toothache, right? So nipping, mm, masakit. <laughs> so it is very, very sad to see those cases. So 
please don't indulge your children's appetite. Don't teach them to be drinking sodas and eating candies. Praise God when children don't have any decay. You don't need to take them to the dentist. They don't need to be afraid of going just for a checkup, for a cleaning to the dentist because you have controlled their food. You have decided what amount of sugar, small amount that you might use, and not even the wide refined one, but even molasses is a better option than uh, this type of sugar. But it is really a blessing to see parents that have been careful enough to uh, provide more of the sweet fruits, like bananas, mangoes, um, all kinds of fruits that you are blessed with in the Philippines. So those recipes just be creative we incorporated banana this time but if the mango is in season use mango if um, apples are in season and less expensive use apples use whatever you have that will fit your family budget and that will be nutritious and delicious and remember whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do do all to the glory of God. So may the Lord bless your 10 talents and enjoy eating with your family for the glory of God. May God bless you. Mm -hmm.